Hello, welcome to Cataclysm University. My name is Vormithrax, I'll be your instructor, and this is course number 25, where we'll be discussing food preservation, specifically preserving meat in the early game. So later in the game, you probably won't have as much of a trouble with this, and you'll have lots of looted foods of various types, and you'll have access to a lot more resources. But starvation in the early game, especially for newer players, can be a big issue. And one way to prevent starvation is to learn how to preserve the meat that you come across. So meat has a very short timer in which it's still good to eat and you can find yourself constantly having to go out and hunt for more meat and it kind of turns into a cycle where you're spending too much time doing that. So a better choice would be to go hunt a bunch of meat at once, know and learn how to preserve the meat so it doesn't ever spoil and that will prevent you having to go out as often to re uh, refresh your food supply. So here are some things you can do in the early portion of the game to uh, help you along and preserve the meat. So there's a few things we're going to talk about and all of these can be done fairly early if you know what to look for and what to do. And there's a few things we're going to assume here, and I'm going to use some cheats just to speed up the video a bit, but here's what we've got. So, so far around this area, I've got a pile of meat and some spider eggs, and I'm going to talk about the spider eggs a little bit later in the episode. I've got a brazier, which is fairly simple to make. You just need some sheet metal, and the common way to get that is to just bang up an oven. Just go to the nearest house, smash apart the oven, grab the sheet metal, bring it back to your starting shelter area, wherever you're setting up, and uh, you you can build a brazier and that allows for safe burning of fire in your base. So I've got a brazier running here with some wood in there and a set of fire so we can cook. I've got a supply of meat and then I've got some materials here that we're also going to talk about in just a moment. So the first thing to do for food preservation is to supply a source of charcoal. And charcoal is simply made just by building a charcoal kiln and then feeding wood products into it and you burn that for a period of time. Once the burning is done, you have charcoal and you can bring it back to your base. So here is the, the, what I would recommend you do for getting a, a charcoal supply. Um, first, find some forest area. So we just happened in this map to have some right next to our starting evac shelter, so that makes it pretty convenient. And I would recommend that you build the charcoal kiln next to your supply of wood. Don't build it in your base. The reason for that is you don't want to have to chop down and cart around big trees and logs all the way back to your base. Sometimes your shelter is a long ways away from your wood supply and it's a real hassle to try to move that heavy weight of wood back and forth. Much better to build the kiln over near the wood supply, burn the wood in the kiln, and then just bring back the relatively light charcoal. So I'm going to go ahead and build the kiln, and yeah, we'll build it right here. This is a nice convenient little area with a bunch of uh, trees nearby. So to build this, you have to have a few things. So if I bring up the construction menu, which is Shift-8, and then do a search for a kiln, you can see here, build charcoal kiln is one of the choices, and here's what you need. You need fabrication level 3, so either start with that in your character design, or skill up to level 3 so you can build the kiln. You'll also need a tool with hammering of 2 and a tool with digging of 2, both of which are easy to make and I'll show you the tools. And then you need 40 rocks. So just run around outside your uh, shelter area looking for rocks or a quick way if you've got access to it and you've uh, progressed far enough is to just go burn a building down. Um, pick a building in town and you may have done this already as part of your survival process for uh, looting a town. Um, just set a building on fire, let it burn all the way down and once it's done, you can run over the rubble and you'll have tons and tons of rocks and nails, which can also be very useful. So it's very simple to pick them all up and you'll have as many rocks and uh, a whole bunch of nails to go build with. Um, so that's a quick way of gathering a whole bunch of rocks if you don't want to scour the countryside looking for them. Um, but those are the tools. So here's what I've got in regards to tools. I've got the makeshift hammer, gives you the hammering too. A knife gives you cutting. Shovel gives you digging too. And stone adds is what we're going to do use to uh, do some wood crafting. Okay, so now that we've got the materials, we're going to go ahead and go back into this menu, find the kiln... Tell it to build it, and we're going to pick a direction. I'm going to build it to my left, and it takes a little bit of time to do, and there we go. We now have a charcoal kiln in this little clearing. All you have to do now is load it up with wood products, and you can load it up with just about any kind of wood products. Splintered wood, heavy sticks, trees and logs, your choice. So if we come over here, 
smash this up, grab these five sticks, drop them in the kiln, and you just put them right on top of the kiln position. And I'm going to load this thing up. We'll grab a few of these, and I'll just use the quick movement menu. So we'll say all, and I'll pick the direction of the kiln in the advanced menu, and you can see here it notes that that is the kiln location. Come back to here, shuffle all those over. So now we've got, whoops, now we've got eight sticks in the kiln. And let's do one other thing. If we do eight and trying to remember where this option is at, chop down tree. We need a tool with tree cutting in order to chop down a tree. So I'm actually going to summon up one more item. And this one you might need a little more, uh, a little further into the game, or you might need to loot this. Um, but we're going to find a saw. Just a plain old wood saw. Alright, so now we've got a wood saw. So I'm going to use this tree here as an example. So we're going to bring up the construction menu. We're going to switch back to... cutting of two or more does my wood saw oh that's right I need an axe sorry I'm doing the wrong item so we'll do uh, summon wish for an item uh. all right wood axe is what we're looking for yep tree cutting quality all right so you just need to get an item with tree cutting quality now we can do it so there we go chop down tree pick at the direction that the tree is at and then you pick a direction for the tree to fall. I'm going to have it fall north of me. There we go. So these are now heavy sticks. So now we've got a tree trunk. And if we do that construction menu again, you can see here we now have options for chopping the tree trunk into logs or into planks for building. We're going to say logs. And we're going to say over this side. Okay, fine. <laughs> into logs that direction and there we go now we've got three very large logs and you can see up here they're volume 10 and they weigh 20 pounds each so we don't have quite the volume for that I'm just gonna shift them over like so and then like so alright so now our kiln has three logs and eight heavy sticks and when you examine the kiln, the first message that pops up asks if you want to fire the kiln. And I believe you have to have a fire implement in your inventory, like a lighter or something like that, in order to fire it up. I could be wrong. I can't remember for sure, but uh, just be careful of that. And it just asks if you want to fire the kiln. We're going to say yes. And you can see here it says you fire the kiln. And on this graphics package, it lights up right there so you can see that it's actually operating. So now that it is operating, if we examine this, you can see it says it should take 359 minutes to finish burning. So 360 game minutes in order for that to finish. So that's six hours. So I'm going to fast forward time here and we'll do it this way. Um, what, to, what time? Are, I can't even tell what time we're at. We'll just say wait till noon. Not sure that's going to... Oh, noon of the next day, apparently. <laughs> okay, well, that was a lot more time than I wanted to go by. So we're now uh, famished, dehydrated, and so on. And if we examine it again, now we can see we have 1,000 units of charcoal available for us to pick up. So it's a little too much for us to grab. Let's grab uh, 800. Still a little too much. Let's grab 600. All right, so we got 600 charcoal. We'll just leave the rest there for now. We could, if we liked, pull that charcoal out there to there and load some more sticks in here. And examine it, fire it up. And you can say, it's always six hours, by the way. It doesn't matter how much wood you put in there, it's always six hours to burn. Um, but that way we've got more burning while we're out and about doing our stuff, and it'll be ready for us when we get back. So let's head back into base. Okay, so now that we're back in base, we've got our supply of charcoal. So right there. I'm going to go ahead and drop that on the ground so we can see it. And we're going to shift some sticks onto our brazier. So from here to here... And then we're going to light the brazier. 
Okay, so the next thing that we need that's important is a smoking rack. So I've got the raw materials right here for the smoking racks, rocks and sticks. So let's grab those. And we'll shuffle these aside again. All right, and I'm going to build a smoking rack right here. So we're going to do, again, the Shift-8. And I think it's on this list, but we'll just... Yep, there it is down there. All right, so build a smoking rack that direction. Again, it takes a little bit of time. And material-wise, you can see here, it does take a couple of skills. Fab 3 again, plus cooking 2. And then you need a few more materials. This is why I had the supply of materials. So digging of 1, hammering of 2, cutting of 1, and wood sawing of 1. As well as 16 sticks or 16 2x4s and 8 rocks. So pretty light on the required raw materials, but it does take a number of different tools. And all of these tools are very simple to build and make early on. So it's just the makeshift hammer, makeshift knife, makeshift shovel, and the stone adds. That will get you everything you need in order to build that. And these are all very simple early tools that you should have access to with very light raw material requirements and skill requirements. Okay, so... Now we've got the two things that are most needed. That's the charcoal kiln. We know how to build that and uh, what's needed. And then once you have got your charcoal supply and your smoking rack built, you can actually start preserving the foods. So here's how it's going to work. We're going to grab the charcoal again. And we're going to examine the rack. And it'll ask us, put how many charcoals into the smoking rack? We're going to put all 600 in there. And if we examine it, you can see here the smoking rack contains 600 charcoals. So that's the fuel source for the smoking purposes. And now all we have to do is cook. So we just bring up our crafting menu, go to the food choice, and you can see some options. We have smoked meat. And here you note that it takes a tool with food cooking of one or more, plus a charcoal smoker, which the smoking rack counts as, and three units of meat. So if we want to make a supply of smoked meat, it's going to do 15 charcoal charges. So 15 of our 600 are going to be used per uh, crafting of a smoked meat. It's going to use three of the chunks of meat that I've got on the floor nearby. And you can see what it provides. It's going to provide nutrition 26. There are going to be three portions. And it has a fairly high enjoyability factor. So this is really good. But the more important thing than these is the fact that it has been heavily smoked for long-term preservation. It has no spoilage time. It lasts forever. So once you have smoked the meat, you can just set it aside. And you'll never have to worry about it going bad. We also have an option for dehydrated meat. So charcoal smoker again, 25 charges, only two charges of meat. Not quite as much in the nutrition or portion section. So I prefer smoked meat, but there may be a few reasons for doing dehydrated meat for recipe purposes. Um, so you might want to have a supply of dehydrated as well as smoked meat. Because I think some of the recipes you can make will use dehydrated meat in place of standard chunks of meat, but it may not allow smoked meat. So just be aware of the differentiation. Um, the dehydrated meat is good for other cooking purposes to use in recipes, whereas smoked meat is pretty much its own finished product. Um, so I usually do maybe a 75-25 split between smoked meat and dehydrated meat. Just kind of depends on what my future plans are for the, uh, the meat that I've got on hand. But I try to have a little bit of both. Next, you can also just use it as a straight-up cooker. Or the, the smoking rack has nothing to do with the cooked meat. That's just the fire and the, ch the chunks of meat. So that you're already used to probably. But the last one I want to point out is this powdered egg option. So a really good source of early food for survivors to use are either ant hills, ant hills, where you see tons of ants roaming around. If you have the ability to kill the ants safely, you can farm the ants in the ant hills for tons and tons of meat and chitin. So Obviously, the meat is great for a food source, and there's usually so many ants, you won't really have a chance of depleting those things. And they'll just keep generating. So they're a great supply of food. If you know where an ant hill is located, just take a trip out there, kill a bunch of ants, bring back the meat, and smoke it up or dehydrate it, and you're good to go. But another good source is the basements that have spiders in them. So you've probably run across these if you spend any time searching towns and buildings. Houses that have basements, there's a chance it'll be a spider basement with lots of spider webs and giant spiders. And one of the things you'll find in those is egg sacs. 
when you examine the egg sacs, there's a chance little spiders will pop out that you'll have to kill, but there's also a chance that you'll find eggs. And these are not little tiny eggs. These are fist-sized eggs from giant spiders. So they're pretty yucky, and I'm going to examine one real quick here. So actually, we can see it here. So a fist-sized egg from a giant spider. Incredibly gross. You can eat it. It's got nutrition of 20, quench of 10, which is pretty good, but it's got a minus 20 enjoyability because it's so nasty. So it also provides 10 portions per egg. That's huge. So that's why I wanted to point this out. If you go to a spider basement and you can safely kill the spiders and collect these eggs, you can get yourself a really good food source if you do one further step. Bring the eggs back to your base, have the smoker available for use, and use that recipe that you just saw for powdered eggs. You can see here, it's going to take 25 charges from your charcoal smoker. It requires either bird eggs, reptile eggs, or spider eggs, and ant eggs. So it'll turn four spider eggs into 100 portions of powdered egg. That is massive! So. What ends up happening is with a very just one single basement of spider eggs, you can end up with hundreds and hundreds of powdered egg doses that you can use for cooking. That will last you a very, very long time, and once you have powdered the eggs, they're perfectly preserved. They don't need anything else. They're dehydrated, essentially, and they last forever. So it'll give you a really, really long-term source of eggs. And you can use eggs for lots of other cooking, so... Um, the powdered eggs will be useful for cooking other types of items. Let's do a search for egg, for example. So you can make the very yummy scrambled eggs, the deluxe scrambled eggs, and in that you can combine the de dehydrated meat that you've got on hand as well as the eggs and make yourself really good deluxe scrambled eggs. That gives nutrition 33, enjoyability 4, so this is one of my favorite things as well. Um, and because it's dehydrated meat and powdered eggs, they last forever. You just cook up a batch of these deluxe scrambled eggs and you're good to go. Got a really good food source. So lots of possibilities. There are other ways to preserve food. You can can food, vacuum pack food, dehydrate food with a food dehydrator that you can either find or build later on. Uh, but those are kind of later in the process for survivability. But these types of things here, the charcoal rack, the smoking rack, and knowing where to get the different types of uh, easily accessible food can be the difference between starvation and long-term survival. Especially when you get to a point where you need to do a lot of reading in your base or you're doing a lot of base construction and large amounts of time is rolling by, causing you to consume a lot of food from your limited food supplies. You want to make sure you stock up. So usually before I'll do that kind of activity, I'll head out to the local ant hill or spider nest in a basement and gather up as much material as I can, bring it back to the base, get it all smoked, dehydrated, and otherwise preserved into its um, forms so that it won't ever rot. And then I have a easy to use and access food supply for those periods of time where I need to spend a lot of time in my base, not out uh, scavenging and finding other items. So I think that will cover those portions. Now, the last thing I want to mention is there's another source uh, for preserving meat, and that is to turn it into jerky. And the best and easiest way to do that is to secure a good supply of salt. And uh, newer players may not be aware of this, but swamp water, when you go examine it, can either be salt water or fresh water. So I'm going to show you what I mean. So I'm going to teleport myself to the nearest swamp. So we're going to do a long-range teleport down here. And then we're going to go examine this swamp area. Oops, we've got spiders. Let's move a little further south. Turn that off. All right, so anytime you get near a swamp, you'll see all these pools of water. And you cannot tell visually or by pointing at it what kind of water it is. But if you examine it, you can see right here, it'll tell you what you want to do with salt water from the shallow water. I'm going to pour that into the container that I'm carrying, the steel jerry can. And now I have a steel jerry can of salt water, 80 doses. Now, if you keep examining these pools, just watch this spot here, and you will on occasion find fresh water. So it can sometimes take a while. It's going to be probably 90% salt. But eventually you will find fresh water. And you just got to be persistent. I don't know which one of these might be fresh water. 
but believe me there is fresh water in the in the swamp areas so you can come down here to gather fresh water for drinking and cooking as well you'll just have to run around examining all the pools until you locate one and then remember where that spots at because by far the majority of these pools will be salt water all right but let's take our salt water back up to our base all right, so now that we've got the salt water available, if we go back to our menu and go into cooking, you'll see right here, meat jerky comes up as an option. So that's another source and way of preserving food. And you can see here it requires salt water or salt. And you can actually boil the salt water down to get the raw salt to store. If you don't want to store it in the uh, canister the uh, for the liquid storage. But this allows you to create meat jerky. So it it's going to take one chunk of meat and it provides three eating portions for nine nutrition each so that's 27 nutrition total for a single piece of meat it is salty so it actually lowers your quench and it has an enjoyability of four which is decent um, and it's salty dried meat that never goes bad but will make you thirsty so it's a good source as well if you've only got access to that it doesn't require you to build all those other items all you need is the source of salt water and the meat and a fire source so you don't need a smoking rack uh, or anything like that you can see here it can use just the nearby fire this is just an optional um, so super early this might be a better bet until you get up the raw materials and the tools that you need to build the smoker and the smoking rack you can rely on the meat jerky just grab some salt water or salt and the meat and a fire and that's all you need you can uh, jerk your meat and you'll be able to store it as long as you'd like um, Take a look here if we go back to food actually, or actually it's under chemicals. Um, let me look it up here. So salt, one of these recipes is simpler than the others. There we go. So that is how you get salt from salt water. It does require a tool with boiling of one or more. So you need a pot or something like that, or a can I think would do it. Um, I don't happen to have one. I'm not going to worry about it. It's fairly straightforward. But it just needs something with boiling of one, the nearby fire, and some salt water. And you can turn it into raw salt, which you can just drop on the ground. Um, and it makes a pretty good amount of portions. So I think that'll cover it. This is running a little longer than I wanted. But uh, that will help, I think, newer players try to secure and preserve food sources. Um, very, very important. I can't stress enough how important it is to make the transition from scavenging for food to having a consistent supply of fully preserved food that you can have long term. Um, it marks a pretty big changeover from what kind of activities you can perform when you can go out, spend a very small amount of time going to get food, getting it preserved up. And once you've done that, you're free to go out and do whatever you want for more important activities. You're not tied to your local base and your short-lived food supply that's constantly spoiling on you. So it's a very important transition to get to and uh, marks an important milestone in your survivability. So I hope you found the information helpful as always. Please hit the like, comment, and subscribe options. They really help raise the awareness for the channel and the series and uh, spread the word. Let everybody know that the uh, courses are available, and I hope to see you in the next episode. Have a great day. Bye-bye.